Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another video. This is Wee Farah. <laughs> we got her the other day. She is an 11 week old rag doll. She is so, so adorable. She likes to be cradled like this, like a little baby and she'll go to sleep. Her name is Farah and it's Arabic, which means joy and happiness. So I feel like that suits her very well. <laughs> you want to join in? She's obsessed with my hijab. <laughs> I have had so many brothers and sisters from Indonesia, Somalia, Morocco, Egypt, Germany. I've had to put Farah away because she keeps trying to chew wires and things. So I put her into her bed just now so I can film this video. If you are watching this video, please leave a comment below. Let me know where you're watching from. I absolutely love traveling and just want to know where you're all watching from. In today's video, I want to talk to you about how I told my parents that I became Muslim. Hopefully I can give you some tips that helped me because as a revert, it can be a really difficult thing. That's what put me off taking my shahada for so long was worrying what my family would think. If you've watched my previous videos, you will know that I converted to Islam just before Ramadan, coming up three months ago now. Alhamdulillah. I think it's quite a good idea to start planting some seeds whilst you're doing your research so it's not so much of a shock for your parents. I started implementing a few things into my life when I was doing my research into Islam and one of them was I completely cut out eating pork. I kind of said that to my mom and dad, you know, I let them know that I, I don't eat pork anymore and their first reaction, they found it a little bit strange. Coming from the UK, people here eat quite a lot of pork. Bacon is kind of a popular breakfast choice, lunch choice. Growing up, I used to have pork for dinner. We always ate quite a lot of pork actually in our family. They questioned why I decided that and I just kind of told them what I found out. As we know in Islam, every single thing that we're told not to do has a reasoning behind it. And I just kind of told them that I felt that pigs were unclean, they transmit a lot of diseases, which we are then eating. I actually watched a video and this was probably my turning point. I seen this farmer and he threw rats into this pig pen and the pigs ate it up straight away. That made me feel sick to my stomach thinking I'm eating pork and this pig is literally eating any single thing that's thrown in its direction. They both did find it a little bit strange in the beginning that I told them that I had stopped eating pork. But at this time, I wasn't in the country. I was traveling Southeast Asia, so I wasn't at home. This was just kind of like something I'd said to them on, on the phone as I was kind of planting my seeds. Another thing that they noticed as well was that I'd stopped drinking alcohol. I was a real big party girl going back a few years. That was a shock for them as well when I stopped drinking. I mean, it wasn't a sudden change, it was gradual. Before I met my husband, I would always be out at parties and having nights out and that's where all my friends kind of came from. I didn't really have any friends that I would hang around with that we wouldn't be drinking. That's the only thing that I would do with them. So now I would say that I have pretty much drifted away from all my friends because that's the only thing that we did together was drink alcohol. That life obviously for me now isn't where I want to be. I've just kind of removed myself from that. When I decided to stop drinking, my mom was very, very happy. My mom doesn't drink. She didn't like that lifestyle for me. My mom actually lives very much in an Islamic way, but isn't Muslim. And inshallah one day Allah will open her heart because honestly, it really wouldn't be a massive lifestyle change for my mom. My dad, on the other hand, he likes a good drink, so he found it, I would say, pretty strange that I wanted to stop. And I think that he probably, deep down, still feels that it's a little bit strange that I am Muslim, I think. He's never said anything to me, but that is the feeling that I get. After I travelled Asia, I knew I wanted to be Muslim. I felt Muslim in my heart. I was Muslim in my heart for a good few months before I even took my shahada. Uh, but I didn't want to mention this to my mum and dad because I didn't want them trying to put me off, trying to change my decision. I knew that this was something that I needed to do for myself and I personally wanted to keep it quiet. I just wanted to keep it between me and my husband. Then 
I would hopefully tell my parents after my shahada. Me and my husband went to Qatar and I experimented with the hijab. I wore a black abaya with my hijab, wore it out in Qatar and took some pictures and I posted them on my Instagram. I also posted another picture previous to that when I was in Indonesia at the Istiqlal Mosque in my hijab and a long modest dress. So these were on Instagram and some people had maybe noticed my interest towards Islam. I did have a few people get in touch with me and my husband wondering if I had converted to Islam or if I was planning on but we both just kept it very very quiet because I hadn't even spoken to my family about it so I didn't want anybody else knowing but some people had noticed my interest with pictures and my husband also does YouTube videos you can check his vlogs out his name is Hamza El Yajri so he posted some vlogs on there I had worn the hijab in a few vlogs in Qatar as well there were some lovely sisters on a stall they would let you try on the abaya and the hijab so of course that was another opportunity where I tried it on and this was all in our videos in our YouTube vlogs so people had noticed these kind of things my mum and my dad also follow my husband's YouTube channel so they kind of seen what was going on as well so I think this was also another indication to them that I was considering Islam. When we came back from Qatar, it was December time, it was Christmas day. I'd already told my mum and dad that I wasn't celebrating it. I hadn't really told them why, I just kind of brushed it off a little bit, but I just said that it's just not something really that I personally want to celebrate anymore. I was still living at home at the time. My mum actually had to work, that was the first year she had to work since I was a child. It wasn't like our regular Christmas anyway, so it didn't seem so bad that I wasn't celebrating it because it was only really my dad that was at home. That was the day where I sat down and I had a chat with my dad and I basically told him my feelings towards Islam. I told him that I had read the Quran and that this was something that I was really considering. I didn't tell him that I was Muslim in my heart. I just told him I was considering it how does he feel about that? My dad's reaction was, it's your life, you do what makes you happy. He said, but that's not something that not necessarily agrees with, but he just isn't a religious man at all. He is an atheist. I did mention previously my granny, so my father's mum was a devout Christian. She was a very, very religious lady. He's always respected that, never been religious himself. So that was it. I planted the seed and I kind of told him this was what I was looking into. I'm not sure if he kind of thought that I was serious at the time or if I was genuinely looking into it and really considering converting, but I was really happy with his reaction. I thought that it would have gone a lot worse, to be honest. My husband moved out at the end of December. I took my shahada in March this year, alhamdulillah. I was really, really nervous to tell my mum and dad about it. I think it probably took me about five days after to tell them and I was so, so nervous. I had mentioned to them before that Ramadan was coming up and that this year I was going to be taking part and they just asked the usual kind of questions that non-Muslims ask what you're gonna do and not even drink water or really you're gonna do the full thing you're gonna be so hungry that didn't bother me at all I mean they were just having a joke I think we all experience it non-muslims find it Ramadan very very strange and to be honest with you I didn't understand it either a few years ago I thought that that was impossible to do that but alhamdulillah I've done my first Ramadan and it was amazing I'm really really looking forward to the next one inshallah after I took my shahada I made so many du'as. Like I told you in the last video, the first thing you should do when you need help with something is make du'a. I made so many du'as to make it easier for me to tell my parents and for them to accept me. I couldn't find the right time to tell them. I speak to them every day on the phone. It was just never the right moment. I knew I wanted to tell my mum in person. It wasn't something I wanted to say on the phone. My mum came and stayed with us. It was the first day of Ramadan, so I'd been Muslim, I think, five days, and my mum was staying with us. I was so nervous. I was just constantly plucking up the cards. I was, no, it's not now, not now, not now. Okay, right now, and now I just went and said it. My mum had actually been saying to me, she noticed such a difference in me the last few months. She just noticed so many changes in me. And she kept saying it turned into such a, a wonderful young woman 
Um, you've really changed these last few months and you've changed for the better. So I kind of started it with that and I said to her, you know, you say that I've changed and things in the last few months. Do you know why that is? I converted to Islam, I'm now Muslim. She was really, really shocked. She was a little bit upset about the fact I hadn't actually been open and told her because I always tell my mum absolutely everything but I hadn't spoken to her about this. So I think she was a little bit upset that I hadn't told her that I was planning on converting or that I'd been doing research or anything. But she just said, well, if you're happy, I'm happy for you. And I said to her, did you see it coming? Like, did you expect I was gonna say that? And she said, well, I'm not really that shocked, obviously, because Hamza, my husband's Muslim. I thought she would have guessed it maybe because I stopped drinking, eating pork, and I was doing Ramadan. No, she hadn't guessed it. She was just a little bit upset that I hadn't actually told her and that I hadn't maybe trusted her with it. But I was worried at the time that she'd maybe try and talk me out of it. That still left my dad to tell. One or two days went by, I couldn't tell him. My husband had actually made a YouTube video about my conversion story and a video of me in the mosque taking my shahada. He posted it online and I just thought, you know what, this is going to be the icebreaker because I can't tell my dad. Like, I just couldn't do it. And my dad seen it. A couple of hours later, he phoned me. The title was written in Arabic and my dad translated it and it said, my British wife converts to Islam. My dad says, what is this video I've just seen online? And I got really worried. I thought, oh my goodness, his reaction is really awful. And he goes, British wife? It's meant to say Scottish wife. <laughs> He was more bothered about the fact that my husband had called me British rather than Scottish. He said nothing about it, absolutely nothing. And I said, well, what do you think? He says, you spoke to me about it in December, so it's not a surprise at all. He did have one question for me. Are you gonna wear the hijab, he called it? I says, yeah, I will be. I'll be covering my hair from now on. I think that shocked him a little bit. Maybe he didn't think I was so serious. He just kind of said, okay, well, if that makes you happy, then that's absolutely fine. In his generation and especially coming from a place like Sky, where you're so isolated it's really foreign to him it's really kind of a foreign religion and I think deep down he probably does find it a little bit strange I've been so nervous to wear the scarf around him I was nervous to wear it in front of my mum as well I got over that straight away literally within the second time I wore it I completely got over that. My mum was even helping me iron out creases and stuff like that in my scarf so completely fine uh, wearing it around my mum. My dad on the other hand he's been round to visit me but it's been in the house so obviously I've not been covering my hair. I've worn the scarf once in front of him. It was in a kind of a turban style with a cap on top so it wasn't like this like the full hijab style. I'm still yet to see him when I'm wearing my full hijab. Anything in life when you start doing something that's a bit different or what people around you aren't used to they're gonna find it a wee bit strange in the beginning but inshallah they'll get used to it. My mum is completely used to me wearing it now. I should wear it the weekends there. She kept telling me you look really lovely wearing your scarf. He was actually a little bit worried because we were going away for the weekend. It was going to be hot weather. My mum said, you're going to be expecting me to cover up. I says, mum, you're 59 years of age. I'm not going to tell you how to dress. That's not up to me at all. If you want to wear your shorts, you wear your shorts. You're not telling me how to dress, so I can't tell you how to dress. She's done a fantastic job of bringing me up. So now it's turning tables and it's my turn to kind of look after her. I would never tell somebody what they can and can't wear because even going back two years ago, I would have been in shorts and a vest top as well. Allah chooses who he wills and Alhamdulillah, I was one of them. And inshallah, he can open up the hearts to the rest of my family one day. I hope that you find this video useful. I hope that you've got some tips from this. And I hope that it's not too difficult for any revert brothers and sisters out there to tell their families. Uh, my family took it really well, alhamdulillah. I have started posting some modest outfits, hijab, fashion ideas over on my Instagram. If you would like to check out my page, my name is Rebecca underscore El Yazri. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope to see you in the next one, inshallah. Say bye, Farah. Bye.